Diving into the ocean can be exciting, but sometimes sharks think humans are food. They might confuse surfers for seals or be drawn by the smell of blood. Sharks can also attack out of curiosity or if they're mixed up when they see someone splashing in the water. During a feeding frenzy, sharks can get excited and shoot more when there's a lot of food around. So, when playing in the sea, remember that you might seem like a tasty snack to a shark. Here are six stories of the worst shark attack cases in history. In the frigid waters off the coast of Alaska, a competitive open water swimmer named Leah Thompson was about to embark on a challenge that could etch her name into the annals of history. Leah had trained her whole life for moments like this, pushing her body and mind to the limits to become the record holder for the longest unassisted swim in these icy waters. It was the summer of 2011, and the chill in the air was as sharp as the anticipation that ran through Leah's veins. Leah's journey began at dawn with the orange hues of the morning sun casting a golden path across the dark undulating surface of the ocean. The scene was picturesque, the kind of moment that postcards are made of except for the cold which seemed to seep into every bone in the body. The locals, familiar with the area's rugged beauty and treacherous waters, had shared tales of mariners and adventurers who dared to confront the Alaskan wilderness. Yet Leah felt a connection to these waters, a call to prove herself against the vast, unyielding sea. As she slid into the water, her body recoiled momentarily at the shock of the cold before she acclimated and began her rhythmic strokes, each propelling her further into the heart of the ocean. Leah's support team followed at a safe distance, monitoring her progress and ready to intervene at the first sign of trouble. But Leah was in her element, her focus unbreakable, her determination as fierce as the currents she navigated. Hours passed with Leah covering mile after mile, her thoughts oscillating between the mechanical repetition of her strokes and the serene emptiness that enveloped her. The sun climbed higher, casting its warm glow over the sea, starkly contrasting the cold darkness lurking beneath the waves. It was in these depths that the shadow first appeared. A great white shark, intrigued by the lone swimmer above, began to shadow Leah's progress. The shark, a magnificent sea predator, was drawn to Leah out of hunger and curiosity. Its massive form glided effortlessly through the water, a silent observer of the human's relentless pursuit. Unaware of her observer, Leah continued her swim, her body beginning to feel the strain of her efforts. The cold numbed her limbs and fatigue whispered for her to give in, but her spirit remained unbroken. She swam on, driven by a force more potent than the physical exhaustion that clawed at her with each stroke. As the day wore on, Leah's support team grew increasingly anxious. The waters off Alaska were known for their unpredictable dangers and the presence of a great white shark heightened their concern. They debated intervening, pulling Leah from her record-breaking attempt to ensure her safety. Yet, whenever they considered acting, Leah's determination and progress convinced them to hold off and trust in her strength and preparation. The shark continued its silent vigil, its interest in Leah undiminished. It was a surreal dance between predator and prey, where the circumstances blurred the usual roles. For all her human vulnerabilities, Leah was not a target but an anomaly in the shark's domain, a puzzle that piqued its interest. The night began to fall and the temperature dropped further with it. Leah's body was pushed to its limits, her movements becoming slower, more laborious. The cold seeped into her bones, a constant reminder of the harshness of her environment. Yet her resolve did not waver. She pressed on, each stroke a testament to her will, each breath a defiance of the natural order that sought to claim her. Leah's challenge reached its zenith in the darkest hours, with the moon casting a silver light over the water. The Great White, still following, had become a symbol of the natural world's raw power and majesty, a force that Leah respected but refused to fear. Leah's initial reaction upon realizing a predator of such magnitude was following her was pure adrenaline. However, her extensive training and mental preparation for the swim had also equipped her with the knowledge of how to handle potential shark encounters. Understanding that panic and rapid movements could trigger the shark's predatory instincts, Leah tried to remain calm and maintain steady, deliberate strokes. The shark made several close passes, scrutinizing Leah with an almost calculated curiosity each time. Leah remained still when necessary in these moments, allowing the shark to observe her without perceiving her as prey or a threat. 
This tactic was based on the understanding that sharks, often misunderstood as mindless predators, can discern curiosity from aggression. Surviving this ordeal required Leah to tap into bottomless reserves of mental strength. She continuously reassured herself, focusing on her breathing and maintaining a presence of mind that kept panic at bay. Leah's ability to stay composed under such intense pressure was instrumental in preventing the situation from escalating into a physical attack. The turning point came when, after what felt like an eternity, the shark slowly began to lose interest. Perhaps realizing that Leah was not its typical prey or simply satisfied with its curiosity, the shark gradually distanced itself, eventually disappearing into the ocean's depths. Leah, though shaken, seized the moment to reassess her situation and gather her strength. Recognizing the shark's departure as her opportunity to continue, she resumed her swim with renewed vigor and a profound gratitude for surviving the encounter. Her focus shifted back to her initial goal, but now with the added perspective of coming face to face with one of nature's most formidable predators and emerging unscathed. Completing the swim marked a significant achievement in Leah's career and embodied a remarkable story of human perseverance. Leah's encounter with the great white shark became a testament to her courage, a vivid illustration of the unpredictable challenges adventurers face in the natural world, and a reminder of the respect due to the creatures that inhabit it. Her survival strategy, rooted in calmness, understanding, and respect for the shark, highlighted a crucial lesson in coexisting with the powerful forces of nature. She understood then that her journey was more than a record. It was a communion with the sea, a challenge to herself, and a story that would be told in hushed tones of a woman who dared to confront the shadows beneath the waves. The dawn of the next day found Leah exhausted but triumphant. She had completed her swim, setting a new record and proving to herself and the world that the human spirit could endure and overcome. Leah's ordeal became a tale of courage and resilience, a reminder that the most formidable challenges often lie within ourselves. She had faced the vastness of the ocean and the shadows beneath the waves, not with conquest in mind, but with respect and a desire to understand. Like the waters she had navigated, her story was deep and filled with the unknown, a testament to the enduring strength of the human spirit. In the vast, unyielding darkness of the North Atlantic, far from the comforting warmth of sunlight, lay a place where history and mystery entwined like the seaweed that dances to the ocean's deep currents. It was here, off the rugged coast of Norway, that Marcus Holt sought to etch his name into the annals of legendary deep-sea divers. The year was 1997, and Marcus, driven by tales of a sunken World War II submarine rumored to hold a king's ransom in gold, set his sights on the abyss. Marcus was no stranger to the ocean's depths, but this expedition differed. It wasn't just the lure of gold that called to him. It was the challenge, the chance to conquer a realm where few dared to venture. With a crew of seasoned sailors aboard the Nereid, a vessel as sturdy as the resolve of those it carried, Marcus embarked on his journey into the unknown. The target of their expedition lay miles beneath the waves, a steel leviathan that had met its fate during the war's tumultuous years. Legend spoke of the U-559, a German submarine said to have been laden with gold stolen from occupied territories, now resting in the watery grave of the North Atlantic. The stories had passed from one generation to the next, each adding its layer of intrigue and speculation. But for Marcus, the U-559 was not just a story. It was his obsession. As the Nereid reached the coordinates that had consumed Marcus's every waking thought, the team prepared for the descent. The ocean around them was a tapestry of blues and blacks, a testament to the untamed beauty and unfathomable depths of the world beneath. Marcus donned his diving suit, a second skin that would protect him from the crushing pressure of the deep. With a final check of his equipment and a nod to his team, he stepped into the void, his body enveloped by the sea's cold embrace. The descent was a journey through time, the water around him growing colder and darker with each passing meter. Marcus's excitement was tempered by an eerie sense of foreboding as he neared the ocean floor. The submarine's resting place was a graveyard of ships, a silent testament to the ocean's deadly embrace. In the shadow of the sunken U-559, Marcus encountered the guardian of the abyss here, 
A massive Greenland shark, ancient and mysterious, emerged from the darkness. Its slow, deliberate movements belied its power, and its eyes, void of emotion, seemed to pierce through Marcus. At that moment, Marcus felt a connection to the shark, a creature that had survived the eons in the deep, silent and unseen. Trapped in the gloom, Marcus's reality began to fray at the edges. The solitude of the deep, combined with the effects of nitrogen narcosis, made it hard to distinguish between what was real and what was the product of his oxygen-starved brain. Hallucinations danced at the edge of his vision, blurring the lines between the living and the dead, the past and the present. The gold, once the object of his desire, seemed trivial in the face of the shark's silent vigil. Marcus realized that the true treasure was not the material wealth within the submarine, but the experience, the connection to a part of the world untouched by human hands. The shark, a symbol of the ocean's mystery and power, was the natural guardian of the deep, a reminder that some secrets are meant to remain hidden beneath the waves. Marcus Holt's encounter with the massive Greenland shark in the silent depths near the sunken WW-2 submarine was less an attack than a profound moment of realization. The ancient shark, a silent guardian of the deep, observed Marcus with an eerie calmness, its massive form gliding through the water with effortless grace. Marcus, caught in the grip of nitrogen narcosis, experienced a surreal blend of fear and fascination. His survival hinged on his ability to stay calm and recognize the shark's lack of aggression. It simply circled him a silent sentinel of the deep before disappearing into the dark waters. In the end, Marcus left the U-559 and its secrets untouched. The journey back to the surface reflected his internal struggle, a battle between greed and respect for the natural world. When he emerged from the depths, the world seemed a little brighter, the air a little sweeter. Marcus Holt's expedition to the U-559 became a legend. Not for the gold he failed to retrieve, but for the wisdom he gained. The abyss had whispered its secrets to him, and he had listened. The encounter with the Greenland shark had changed him. It taught him that the actual value of exploration was not in the conquest, but in the experience and connection to the Earth and its ancient inhabitants. The Nereid sailed back to Norway, its crew richer not in gold, but in stories. Marcus's tale of the Guardian of the Abyss, the shark that watched over the sunken submarine became a testament to the mysteries in the ocean's depths, a reminder that some things are beyond the reach of human ambition. In the summer of 2003, the serene coastline of California was the center stage for a series of unnerving events. The quaint town of Del Mar, nestled along this picturesque stretch of the Pacific, was known more for its sandy beaches and surf culture than for the dark undercurrents that would soon envelop it. The tranquility of Del Mar was shattered when Mia Jung, a tenacious journalist for the local paper The Coastal Watch, received reports of an unprecedented number of shark attacks in the area. Known for her investigative prowess, Mia was immediately drawn to the story, sensing that the sudden spike in aggression from the marine inhabitants was more than just a quirk of nature. As Mia delved deeper into the investigation, she uncovered a disturbing connection between the shark attacks and illegal chemical dumping off the coast. It appeared that a conglomerate under the guise of marine research had been discharging toxic waste into the ocean, disrupting the ecosystem's delicate balance and inciting the local shark population into a frenzy. Mia's quest for the truth was not without its perils. The more she probed, the clearer it became that some individuals would go to great lengths to ensure her silence. Threats began to materialize from the affected marine life and shadowy figures lurking in the margins of her investigation. Despite the danger, Mia remained undeterred. Her investigation took her from the dimly lit corridors of corporate offices to the very heart of the stormy sea. Alongside her trusted friend and marine biologist, Dr. Lucas Harper, Mia sought to gather undeniable proof of the conglomerate's misdeeds. The climax of their endeavor came on a fateful day aboard Dr. Harper's research vessel. As they collected samples near the dumping site, they were besieged by a group of sharks, their behavior more erratic than ever, a vivid testament to the chemical's effect on their nervous systems. Amid their urgent retreat toward the safety of their research vessel, Mia Jang felt a sudden sharp tug on her leg. 
Her heart skipped a beat as she realized that one of the sharks had managed to close the distance between them in its chemically induced confusion and aggression. The murky waters around her churned violently as the shark's serrated teeth grazed her wetsuit, narrowly missing her skin but catching on the fabric. Panic threatened to overtake her, the instinctual fear of being pulled under wrestling with her determination to survive. But Mia was not alone. Always attentive, Lucas Harper had kept a vigilant eye on Mia as they escaped. Seeing the shark lunge at Mia, he acted with swift decisiveness that belied his calm exterior. Lucas swam directly toward Mia without hesitation his movements calculated and precise. He understood the risk of intervening directly with a shark in attack mode. Still, he also knew their erratic behavior might offer a slim chance of distraction. Reaching Mia in just a few powerful strokes, Lucas positioned himself between her and the shark, wielding his dive knife not as a weapon but as a defense. Lucas aimed for the most non-lethal deterrent based on his deep understanding of shark behavior. He targeted the shark's most sensitive areas, tapping it sharply on the snout with the flat of his dive knife. Sharks, even those affected by toxins, often retreat after an unexpected resistance, as it confuses and startles them. His action, combined with the residual noise and light from the flare he had fired moments earlier, created enough distraction for the shark to lose interest in Mia momentarily. Seizing the moment, Lucas grabbed Mia by the arm, ensuring she was all right before signaling her to swim as fast as they could to the boat. Mia, shaken but unharmed thanks to the protective material of her wetsuit, followed Lucas's lead. The adrenaline surging through her veins lent her strength she didn't know she had, propelling her through the water. As they hauled themselves onto the deck's safety, Mia couldn't help but feel gratitude towards Lucas. His quick thinking and bravery had undoubtedly saved her from a far worse fate. Sitting on the deck, catching their breaths after the ordeal, the gravity of the situation began to sink in. Mia looked over at Lucas, a mix of thankfulness and resolve in her eyes. This close encounter with death only solidified her determination to expose the environmental crimes that had led to this dangerous imbalance in the ecosystem. But the actual battle lay ahead. Armed with irrefutable evidence, Mia took her findings to the public, sparking outrage and prompting immediate action. The conglomerate was exposed and faced severe legal repercussions for its actions. The dumping ceased, and efforts were initiated to rehabilitate the affected marine life. In the wake of the scandal, Mia Jang emerged not only as a hero in the eyes of the Del Mar community, but also as a beacon of environmental advocacy. Her courage to stand against formidable adversaries highlighted the importance of safeguarding our planet's delicate ecosystems. Years later, the events of that tumultuous summer served as a stark reminder of the consequences of human recklessness. Mia's story, chronicled in her own words in a best-selling book, inspired a new generation of environmentalists and journalists alike. As for Del Mar, the town slowly regained its peaceful rhythm. The azure waves once again teeming with life, a testament to nature's resilience. Archaeologist Ethan Ward's life was about to take a dramatic turn in the warm turquoise waters off the coast of a quaint Greek island. The year was 2005 and Ethan, an esteemed but headstrong archaeologist, had devoted his life to uncovering the mysteries of ancient civilizations. However, none of his past expeditions could have prepared him for what lay beneath the waves near this serene island community. Ethan had stumbled upon a legend, a local myth that spoke of an ancient relic protected by a guardian of the deep, a mythical shark that had roamed these waters since antiquity. This guardian was said to be the protector of a powerful artifact, an emblem of the gods themselves, lost to time and the sea. Driven by curiosity and the thrill of discovery, Ethan embarked on a dive that would change the island's fate forever. The relic, a bronze trident adorned with intricate carvings and precious stones, lay in a sunken temple off the island's rugged coastline. Its beauty was unmatched, its history palpable in the cool sea breeze. With awe and scholarly excitement, Ethan carefully extracted the trident from its watery grave unaware of the ancient curse he was about to awaken. No sooner had Ethan returned to the surface with the relic than the tranquil life of the island began to unravel. Unheard of in these parts for decades, shark attacks began to plague the coast. The island's inhabitants, once living in harmony with the sea, now found themselves in a state of terror, 
as if the very ocean itself had turned against them. The shark attacks on the island's inhabitants occurred when individuals entered the water, whether for swimming, fishing, or other activities typical of their daily routines and livelihoods. These sharks, influenced by the Guardian's curse, specifically targeted areas frequented by humans, displaying unusual aggression and boldness. Initially dismissive of the locals' fears and warnings, Ethan soon realized the gravity of the situation. The attacks were not random, they were targeted and deliberate. Enraged by the theft of its charge, the ancient guardian had unleashed its fury upon the island. Ethan's skepticism turned to dread as he understood the relic's power and the guardian's wrath. Consumed by guilt, Ethan embarked on a quest to decipher the trident's mysteries and find a way to appease the guardian. His journey took him deep into the island's history, uncovering tales of ancient rites and offerings made to the sea to ensure its bounty and protection. Ethan realized that the trident was not merely a ceremonial object but a key to the island's harmony with the natural world. With the help of Maria Costas, a local historian, and her brother Nikos, a skilled diver, Ethan delved into the island's past, seeking clues that could lead to a resolution. Their research uncovered ancient texts that spoke of a ritual, a way to calm the Guardian's rage and restore balance. As the island prepared for its most dangerous night, Ethan, Maria, and Nico set out to perform the ancient ritual. They returned the trident to its rightful place in the underwater temple, accompanied by offerings from the islanders, symbols of respect and understanding for the Guardian's role as protector. The ceremony was fraught with tension, the sea around them teeming with shadows. But as the trident settled back into the seabed, a calm seemed to spread through the waters. The attack ceased and the Guardian, its duty fulfilled, retreated into the depths, leaving a community forever changed. In the following weeks, life on the island slowly returned to normal, but the memory of the Guardian's curse lingered. Ethan, once a seeker of treasures, had learned a valuable lesson about the balance between discovery and respect for ancient beliefs and the natural world. The experience profoundly affected him, altering his approach to archaeology and his understanding of humanity's place in the cosmos. He remained on the island, working alongside Maria and Nikos to preserve its history and the story of the Guardian's curse, a tale of hubris, redemption, and the enduring power of ancient mysteries. The Guardian's curse became a cautionary tale, not just for the island, but for all who seek to uncover the secrets of the past. It reminded them that some relics are not meant to be disturbed, that the Guardians of history demand respect, and that the line between myth and reality is often much thinner than we believe. In the vast expanse of the ocean, far from the nearest shore, a solitary research platform bobbed on the surface like a lonely island in a sea of endless blue. The year was 2014, and Dr. Kara Simmons, a dedicated marine biologist, had made this remote outpost her temporary home. Her mission was to study the nocturnal behaviors of sharks, creatures that have fascinated her since childhood. Kara believed that understanding these apex predators could lead to breakthroughs in marine conservation and unlock secrets of their misunderstood nature. The platform, officially known as Oceanic Research Station Delta, was situated in the Pacific Ocean, a few hundred miles off the coast of Hawaii. In these deep waters, Kara hoped to observe the rarely seen hunting patterns of sharks under cover of darkness. The station, equipped with state-of-the-art technology and underwater lighting systems, was designed to attract marine life making it an ideal place for her research. However, as often with the sea, calm waters can quickly turn treacherous. A sudden, unforeseen, violent storm swept across the ocean, isolating Kara from the rest of the world. Communications were severed, leaving her stranded on this metal speck amidst the swirling storm. As the storm raged on, the day gave way to night, and the research platform became an unwitting beacon in the dark, drawing the attention of the ocean's predators. Shadows began to circle beneath the waves, their forms large and menacing. Curious and encouraged by the platform's lights, the sharks ventured closer than ever. Though initially fascinated by the sudden opportunity to observe the sharks up close, Kara soon realized the gravity of her situation. The platform, designed for research and not survival in extreme conditions, showed signs of wear from the relentless storm. Supplies were limited and the prospect of rescue seemed distant as the storm blocked all attempts at communication. Faced with the dual threat of nature's fury above and the predators below, 
Kara had to muster all her knowledge and resourcefulness. She knew that panic would serve no purpose. Instead, she focused on securing the station, reinforcing its structural integrity where she could and conserving her limited resources. The isolation and the constant looming presence of the sharks tested Kara's mental fortitude. She documented her observations and thoughts in a journal, a practice that became her only solace in the enveloping darkness. The sharks, seemingly aware of her presence, became a nightly spectacle. They were not the mindless killers of sensationalized stories, but complex creatures, each with its patterns and behaviors. Kara established a routine as days turned into nights and back into days, using her knowledge of sharks to avoid attracting undue attention. She minimized light usage, kept movement on the platform to a minimum during peak shark activity hours, and used her understanding of their behavior to predict their movements. Rescue seemed an ever-distant dream as the storm raged with no sign of abating. But Kara's resolve did not waver. She knew that her survival depended not only on her physical well-being but also on her mental resilience. In all its vastness and mystery, the ocean had always been her passion, and now it was her adversary. As the days passed on the isolated sea sentinel, Dr. Kara Simmons was caught in a relentless cycle of observation, survival, and introspection. Each night, the platform became a stage for the silent ballet of sharks below, their sleek forms cutting through the water, illuminated by the artificial glow. Kara's initial fear gave way to profound wonder and respect for these creatures. They were not the monsters of nightmares, but rather essential components of the ocean's complex ecosystem. Her detailed notes and observations became more than just scientific data. They were a lifeline, a way to maintain her sanity in the face of overwhelming isolation. Kara noted the patterns in the sharks' behaviors, their curious investigations of the platform, and their interactions with each other. She discovered a world far removed from human understanding, a glimpse into the natural order that thrives in the absence of humanity. However, the beauty and intrigue of her underwater observations did nothing to alleviate the psychological toll of her situation. Loneliness crept in during the quieter moments, a constant reminder of her vulnerability and isolation. Kara found herself talking aloud, narrating her actions and findings as if to an unseen audience, a tactic to combat the silence that enveloped her. She missed the simple comforts of human interaction, the sound of another voice, the warmth of human presence. Her dreams were filled with faces of friends and family, only to wake to the stark reality of her solitude. Kara's resilience was tested further by the challenges of living in a confined space with limited supplies and the constant need to maintain the platform's systems. She became adept at troubleshooting problems, from fixing a malfunctioning water purifier to rigging makeshift repairs to the platform's lighting system. Each success was a victory against the odds, bolstering her confidence and determination to survive. The turning point came one night when a giant shark, one she had begun to recognize by its distinctive markings, approached the platform. Instead of fear, Kara felt a surge of excitement. She realized that her unique situation offered an unparalleled opportunity to study these creatures up close and learn from them in previously impossible ways. This revelation fueled her work, transforming her ordeal into a mission of discovery. Her findings challenged existing theories about shark behavior, particularly their social interactions and hunting patterns under the cover of darkness. Kara hypothesized that the platform's lights had altered the shark's natural behaviors, giving her a rare insight into their adaptability. She documented everything with meticulous detail, knowing that her research could contribute significantly to marine biology and shark conservation efforts. When rescue finally arrived, Kara was not the same person who had come to the Sea Sentinel weeks earlier. She had faced her fears, pushed the limits of her endurance, and gained a deeper understanding of the ocean's mysteries. Her experience had been a trial by fire, forging a new resolve and commitment to her work. The rescue of Dr. Kara Simmons was executed by an elite search and rescue team from the Coast Guard led by Commander Alex Harrison. Commander Harrison, a veteran of numerous high-stakes rescue operations, had received the distress signal from the Sea Sentinel amidst the storm. Understanding the urgency and peril of the situation, he immediately mobilized his team, embarking on a treacherous journey through the tumultuous sea. As they approached the battered research platform, 
The team skillfully maneuvered their helicopter, battling fierce winds and blinding rain to reach Kara. The sight of her standing alone on the platform was a stark reminder of the resilience of the human spirit. With precision and care, they lowered a rescue harness to Kara, pulling her up into the safety of the helicopter. Commander Harrison and his team's swift and daring rescue ensured that Dr. Simmons's story did not end in tragedy, but became a testament to the power of hope and human determination in the face of nature's most daunting challenges. Back on land, Kara's story became a sensation. Interviews and speaking engagements followed, where she shared her harrowing tale of survival and the scientific discoveries that came from it. However, for Kara, the most significant outcome was the change within herself. She had confronted the unknown, externally and within her psyche, emerging more robust and determined than ever. The publication of her research marked a significant contribution to marine biology, opening new avenues for the study of nocturnal shark behavior. Her work inspired others to explore and appreciate the complexities of marine life, promoting a message of conservation and respect for the ocean's inhabitants. Dr. Kara Simmons returned to the sea many times after her ordeal, each journey fueled by a relentless curiosity and a deep-seated respect for the natural world. The sea sentinel and the nightfall predators that had once threatened her survival were symbols of her resilience, a testament to the power of the human spirit in the face of the unknown. Kyle Anderson's adventure began in 1998, off the coast of a small unknown island in the Bahamas. An avid snorkeler and a lover of the sea, Kyle had heard rumors of an uncharted reef from old fisherman tales at the local marina. These tales spoke of a vibrant underwater kingdom, untouched and hidden from the world, a place that even the most seasoned divers had never seen. Kyle, driven by curiosity and the thrill of discovery, set out to find this mysterious reef. The morning was bright, with the sun casting a shimmering path across the calm sea as Kyle set off from the marina in a small rented boat. The air was filled with the salty tang of the sea and the promise of adventure. After hours of searching, guided by the cryptic clues from the fisherman's tales, Kyle finally stumbled upon the reef. It was a breathtaking sight. The water was clearer than he had seen before, revealing a teeming ecosystem below. Coral formations in every conceivable color stretched beneath him, housing many sea creatures that darted in and out of the crevices. Schools of brightly colored fish swam past, seemingly undisturbed by his presence. Overwhelmed by the reef's beauty, Kyle wasted no time and dove into the water. For a while, everything seemed perfect. He was an intruder in an alien world, yet he felt a sense of belonging. That was until he noticed the shadows circling him from a distance in the water. A sense of unease crept over Kyle as he realized he wasn't alone. Bull sharks, known for their aggression, had interested him. These weren't ordinary bull sharks, though. Kyle observed that they seemed more prominent and aggressive than any he had read about. A unique species, perhaps native only to this reef. Panic set in when one of the sharks charged at him, its jaws wide open. Kyle's instincts took over. He swam as fast as he could towards the surface, narrowly avoiding the shark's bite. His heart pounded as he climbed back into the boat, the sharks now openly circling below. He realized he was far from safety. The engine had been damaged, likely during his frantic escape. Stranded, Kyle watched the sunset casting long shadows over the water. He was miles from the mainland and could not call for help. As darkness enveloped the world around him, Kyle felt the weight of his isolation. The boat drifted aimlessly until it hit something solid. Kyle stumbled out onto a small, uninhabited island. The relief of land under his feet was short-lived as he realized the sharks were still a threat, patrolling the waters around his temporary refuge. The island offered little resources, but Kyle knew he had to survive. He remembered the tales of sailors and castaways from his childhood readings. Using those stories as inspiration, Kyle began to fashion rudimentary tools from what the island offered. Sticks, stones, and the wreckage from the boat. Over the next few days, Kyle's life became a cycle of survival tasks. He collected rainwater for drinking, fashioned spears for fishing, and built a shelter from palm fronds. However, the sharks remained a constant threat, their fins visible from the shore reminding him of his precarious situation. As days turned into weeks, Kyle's initial despair transformed into determination. He studied the sharks' patterns, looking for a way to evade them and return to civilization. 
Kyle's ingenuity led him to construct a raft, using parts of the boat's wreckage and tying them with vines and ropes from the island. The day of his escape attempt arrived. Kyle pushed the raft into the water when the sharks seemed least active at dawn. His heart raced as he paddled quietly, trying to make as little noise as possible. The open sea loomed large before him, both a barrier and a path to freedom. As he moved further from the island, the sight of fins trailing him reignited his fear. But Kyle's planning paid off. The sharks, perhaps confused by the raft or simply uninterested in pursuing him further, eventually fell behind. After hours of tense paddling, Kyle was rescued by a passing fishing boat, and his raft was spotted in the distance. Back on land, his story of survival, ingenuity, and the previously unknown reef, now dubbed the Reef Secret by the media, captivated the world. Kyle's ordeal left him with a profound respect for the ocean and its inhabitants, a reminder of the fine line between beauty and danger. He vowed to return to the sea with a newfound caution and reverence for its mysteries. He felt a more profound calling beyond the fleeting fame. The unique species of bull sharks that had both threatened and inadvertently saved his life sparked his curiosity. He pondered over their behavior, which seemed different from any other shark species documented by science. Months passed, and Kyle's determination only grew stronger. He partnered with marine biologists and conservationists, forming a team dedicated to studying the reef and its shark inhabitants. Their goal was twofold to understand this unique marine ecosystem and to ensure its protection from potential exploitation or destruction due to the sudden interest it had garnered. The expedition back to the reef was fraught with excitement and apprehension. Kyle, now a survivor and a conservation advocate, led the team with a sense of purpose. Upon arrival, they found the reef just as vibrant and teeming with life as Kyle remembered. The team set up underwater cameras, conducted environmental assessments, and most importantly, studied the sharks' behavior from a safe distance. Their findings were groundbreaking. The sharks were unique subspecies of bull sharks, showing remarkable social behaviors and hunting strategies. Kyle's first-hand experiences and the team's scientific observations provided invaluable insights into the shark's ecological role within the reef. The study contributed to marine biology and highlighted the importance of preserving untouched ecosystems. Kyle became an advocate for marine conservation, using his story to underline the interconnectedness of all life forms and the impact of human activity on the ocean. The conclusion of the expedition was bittersweet. While the team had made significant contributions to marine science, Kyle knew that the reef's future remained uncertain in a world where natural wonders often succumb to exploitation. Resilience and beauty untouched and respected, Kyle's adventure had come full circle. From a lone survivor to a catalyst for conservation, his journey underscored the profound impact one individual can have on understanding and preserving our natural world. The incident was a testament to the ocean's mysteries, waiting to be discovered, respected, and protected for generations.